Welcome fellow volunteers to another exciting season of Farm Rescue. As you notice here in this R-Series tractor, they've gone to a different style command arm. This is what they call the Generation 4 command arm with the command screen, which they call 4600. You'll notice we no longer have a 2630 down here. We only have your side corner post display displaying all the same features that last year's tractors have had. And now instead of the 2630, we've got the 4600. It's attached and it stays with the tractor on the Generation 4 command arm. All your functions for tractor and air seeder will be configured through the 4600 on your command arm. Your main screen has SCV 1 through 5 as your different counters, machine totals, hours, your speeds in function two and function one, your hours of your tractor, your gallons and acre, PSI, and all other various functions on the machine. To page through, you go ahead and hit up on top right to your different various home pages. This screen here, you'll recognize this is very similar to what we were dealing with before on the 2630. This is how you're going to look at your tanks for how much product you still have. And then you can go in here, you've got your calibration, your setup, and your calibration. Just as before, enter in all just like we've done in the past. Over here is your height sensor and so on on your cart. There's your total acres and hours for each individual meter and the total on the machine. Continuing on to your third home page, over here you have your video. Well, we do not have it hooked up at the moment, however, you're going to have one through four. One, two, and three are going to show you the first 150, then the 80 and the 200 bushel tanks, and then four will be your rear camera on the rear of the machine for going down the road. Your fourth home screen, this is going to give you your guidance run page. Uh, we haven't got the GPS set up on this tractor here. It's early in the spring during setup. But once we do, we're going to have the same deal here. You'll see your tractor, your implement behind it. And then you go to set track, just like we did in the past. You'll go new track. And again, here we have A plus heading, just like in the past. You'll hit this. Unfortunately, it's going to come up with an error because we do not have the Starfire 3000 attached. So in the future, it's going to come up with the same page where you enter in your set location and then your heading and then hit accept. For your adaptive curves, for those of you who do adaptive curves, same thing here. Select adaptive curves and then it's going to have you start your setup process once we have the Starfire and the subscription installed. Now if we toggle on again to your fifth home page, that's going to show your blockage monitor. You have tower 1 through 8, and then the 12 different little runs going to each of the openers. You've got a total of 96 openers uh, on this 60 foot 1890 air seater, and each of them has a blockage monitor. When one is blocked, it'll come up with a red X in any one of these little squares indicating which tower, like if it was here, this would be tower three and row seven. The towers are labeled on the air seater and so are the individual mini runs going to each individual opener. Right above where they're hose clamped in, it'll have a little seven stamped in the rubber. Here's for testing it, just like in the past. All of these screens have just changed. They're now on the John Deere 4600 instead of the 2630 down on the post. Continuing on to the next home page is going to bring us right back to number one again. And you can go in and set these up exactly however you desire. I'll have them a little bit modified once we get out and running. You'll notice on the bottom of the 4600 we have a bunch of hard keys down here. The X will take you out of any application that you're in. If I select something and then need to change something, I can turn this dial wheel up or down right here and that'll allow you in each individual application to turn your settings up or down to close out of that application hit the x and it'll bring you back out of that application this soft or hard key here takes you directly as a shortcut to the cylinders we do not have a three point so that one is dead this here is for the engine you'll notice up here we always want to make sure we're at 2150 for the rpm we need to keep this tractor at full RPM in order to keep the fan at the rear of the cart blowing enough air pressure to keep product successfully blowing through all the tubes. 
The deaccelerator is down on the floor down here, just like in past years. When you press on that on the end to turn around, it'll cut your power by 25% and take you down to 75% power. And you can change that up and down. To X out, you can hit it up there, or I could have hit it down here. Down here, you got the transmission. On the transmission, we always want to run in manual, unless you really want to go auto, but for pulling a lot of hills and, and, and heavy RPM work, the auto is going to run in an economy mode, and it's going to start to drop your RPMs, and it's going to take power away from you. I highly suggest running in manual by selecting over here, and then this gives you your max, your minimum, and F1 and F2 for your maxes and minimums. Next key here, the PTO, we do not have it on this tractor. iTech we are not using. This of course is for your cell phone if you wanna link it up. It's got a mic and speakers and works right with the radio. Here's you got your radio icon, your headlights if you wanna change any of your setup to turn on or off lights in the nighttime, whatever you wanna customize. Over here is for your AC and heating. And then this will take you back to the control setup, which is more what the techs use at John Deere. Moving up to the front of the command arm four, you'll notice here is a cylinder lock. If you press that, it'll come up with SCV lock engaged. If you're going down the road to take it off, you just press it again, the light disappears off here and it comes up disengaged. ISB we do not use. These here are your SCVs, just like in the past, they're just spread out a little bit more. Number one is what we're gonna use for raising and lowering both the front and rear gang on the entire equipment when you're turning on the headlands. Number two and number three are not used. Please keep them closed and do not use them. Number four is what you're gonna use for the fan in the back of the cart to blow your seed through. You'll start out by clicking it down and then leaving it. And then when you get done seeding and serving a family farmer, you'll push it down. Just like on the old uh, Command Arm 3, to go into float, you just keep pushing down. And so like now I'm in float. So anytime you want to shut the fan off in order to keep the seals from blowing out of the back of the fan, shut it off by going into float. Just push it down and it'll come to a slow spinning stop. Number five is used to fold and unfold all four of the wings. Fold it up. Of course, you just click it once and it'll start the fold sequence. I've got it set up to stay on for 120 seconds and that's enough time to fold or unfold. Vice versa, you're folded like now, you want to get to the field and unfold, you just, whoops, just click it down once. Not careful to go all the way into float like I did earlier, but just into, into the detent position and it will automatically unfold the entire machine in that 120 seconds. When you're turning on the headlands, you just click once to pick it up at the end, do your turn, when you get down and you're ready to put it back in the ground, you just click it one time. You'll notice when you click it one time, on the 4600 screen, it shows continuous and it shows applicating. So you see the line, when I flick it off, it drops and it goes to a gray. Now when I click it, it automatically goes full flow and on continuous time. So if you're ever in doubt whether you've got continuous down pressure, you just look here. If it's yellow and you've got the line near the top, you've got good down pressure. And we wanna make sure we got down pressure all the time to keep all the openers even. This here is just like in the past on the command arm four. This is how you shift. You start the tractor, you start out in park, reverse, let off the clutch, or you can do it clutchless uh, for, for you know, non-fine movement. You can move it right out of part. As long as everyone's clear, it'll automatically engage the clutch and take off. To shift down going forward, you pull it backwards, shift up, up, and then to change your top speed, just like on the command on four, you just turn your, your dial up and that'll allow full speed on the auto setting. This is auto number two. This is auto number one. Again, I recommend running it manual. If you want to run auto, you sure may. Just make sure you keep the RPMs all the way up. The throttle has changed. However, it's the same function. All the way ahead when we're seating to keep max fan speed. These three here we do not use. Here is your auto button. Instead of having to push deep down in here to resume auto steer, they've changed this to a nice up top location, which is very, very nice. So you just press auto when you're ready to go. And of course, on the end of the field, when it's time to turn, you just grab the steering wheel. One, two, three, and four, we do not use. Those are for iTech. 
And then here's your differential lock. You have the pedal or the button on the floor uh, below the steering wheel, just like in past. And then you have it here as also as a soft key here. This auto will keep it on except for when you turn real hard. And then this is a full lock and stays on permanently. Here you've got your beacon on top, your flashers, and then your light function one and two. Your radio self-explanatory, your AC and heating as well. Just like in previous cabs, your key is up front here. Your lights off, parking for like on the side of the road or in the field. You got your flashers for going down the road, and then you've got your full field lights. Here's your windshield wipers, the same feature. Your steering wheel to adjust up and down, pull on the black, and then the foot feet on the floor. On the left side, just like in the past, you've got your bright dim, and you've got your blinker and then the horn. Thank you.